fundamentally what we offer is that you can plan it better because you're looking at a CT scan, but more importantly, you can execute the plan. We wanted to show that we were more accurate and precise than when it's done by hand. And we were mainly using post-op x-rays to look at that. And we had independent radiologists review these, and there was no question that the ones done by the robot were essentially perfect, right, where you wanted them to be. And when you saw the ones that were done by hand, there was a variation in orientation and position of the implants. The good news is now we're coming into this with a lot of information and data that can reassure surgeons. Because we have to be sub-millimeter, you know. I mean, we have to be very accurate. That's where OrthoDoc came from. That software is very unique because of this dimensional accuracy. Each patient's a little different. And so we have to be able to address things like offset and leg length. And so by preoperatively planning this and being able to execute what you plan, you can now address those things. And those are very important in terms of how the hip functions. I think the biggest misconception about robotics is that it's going to replace surgeons. What that robot is designed to do is just a part of what you're doing. And all it is is it's giving you a tool. It just says, this is what you've always been doing. Instead of hammering on a brooch or drilling with a drill, this thing is going to precisely mill and machine the implant to put it in exactly where you want it but you're the one who planned it and you're the one who did the surgery and exposed it and opened and closed it and did all these parts of it and you're using your judgment to do it, it's just a tool. So I don't ever see robotics taking the place of, uh, of surgeons. It's going to enhance surgical capability, not replace it. Here's another ideal application for robotics and this is, this is not pipe dream, this is being done. You can take a revision case, get a CT scan, you can then see the areas three-dimensionally where the cement is, where the bone is damaged. So what's the biggest problem? Is how the heck do you get the implant out, the cement out, and not cause more damage? Well, traditionally, the way I did it was I have a hammer and a chisel, and I'm looking with a headlight down the canal, but I'm trying to chip away cement. Well, here's the problem. <laughs> cement is harder than bone. And so it's very easy to do what you're thinking is chipping out cement and you put a hole in the bone or you crack the bone or you cause some problem to damage to what's there. If you use robotics here, you don't have to worry about that at all. The robot can do two jobs at once. It can take out the old cement by milling it out and it's simultaneously as it's doing that, it's preparing the bone for the new implant. And it's doing it precisely. It's not putting a lot of force. So as it machines the old cement out and machines that fragile bone for the new implant, you get both jobs done at once, faster. And that you go to put in the new implant, it fits precisely. You're not hammering it in under some force. So you're not having the risk of fracture there. So I think revision surgery is another ideal application for robotics. The fun part is to think about where we go after that. I mean, it's not just going to be about doing joint reconstruction. It potentially has a big role in trauma. Surface replacement of the hip, unicompartmental replacement of the knee. Those things, I think, are in the near future. 20 years down the line, I don't have any doubt at all. It's going to be the standard of care. It's going to be, that's how we do things. We have figured out how to link man and machine and robotics and imaging and to do these things in all different parts of medicine. So that's where I see the future and I see it clearly 20 years from now.